Hey y'all, it's meteorologist Erica Lopez joining you on a late Tuesday to give you the latest update from the National Hurricane Center in terms of what we're talking about, Hurricane Ian, the biggest story, and of course, closing in on Florida here soon. I wanna keep in mind, high tide is occurring at 2.50 p.m. Uh, Eastern daylight time across Florida's West Coast. So this is, um, as the storm is coming in and making landfall, uh, this is gonna be a pretty bad situation across those areas. Now what's interesting about Hurricane Ian is was undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle. So what this means, it's the inner outer walls, the inner wall, and the outer walls were colliding, but this does also signify possible strengthening with the storm. And as you can see, the track takes it close to Fort Myers in between Sarasota and Fort Myers. Now the Conan uncertainty, it may make landfall in between this areas and this is why we're watching these two regions very closely. Esto antes de tocar tierra en el estado de Florida. Entonces hablamos un poco de la trayectoria como pueden ver aquí entre miércoles y jueves en las horas de la madrugada esperamos que Nicole tocará tierra en el estado de Florida. Esto con vientos de hasta 75 millas por hora en algunas áreas y también muchísima lluvia que viene para ustedes en la Florida y es por eso que al momento tenemos avisos por huracán en la costa este de Florida. Hey y'all, it's meteorologist Erica Lopez. On this April 4th, we are tracking another moderate risk of severe weather right over Rolling Fork. So this is our debris tracker. This is telling us that there's a tornado on the ground and it's strong enough that it is lofting debris into the atmosphere. Very evident here on radar. If we turn on the velocity layer as well, so this is coming right over Rolling Fork. If you're in Rolling Fork, you need to be in your shelter. This is a life-threatening situation. This is something that you need to be sheltering right now. Look at that velocity signature. All those bright colors. It's because this storm is pretty intense. Tight rotation. It is intensifying as it comes into um, rolling fork. Look at this hail. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, this is in Osceola, uh, southwest of Osceola in Iowa. Take a look at this. And I think he's hoard holding a quarter there. Look how giant this hailstone is. Um, so pretty significant. And although, you know, these areas aren't necessarily warned, I want you guys to take severe thunderstorm warnings, especially seriously, because this is the type of hail uh, that can fall from these storms and that can uh, definitely leave some damage behind there. So tornado watch means the ingredients are there favorable for the potential of tornadoes. So be prepared. A tornado warning means you need to be in your shelter, seeking shelter because a tornado is on the ground or it's imminent. Enhanced risk of severe weather. This is a level three out of five. And this setup is pretty interesting. This is a spring-like setup for the month of February. Anywhere around this area, you're also under the threat of severe weather. So let's talk about it, severe weather ingredients. So what are we seeing meteorologically that is influencing this severe weather threat? We have this dip in the jet stream, this upper level low that I was just talking about and showing you in the MyRadar app. This is gonna move to the east. Now with all of this in place, we also have this dry line setup. And I can't believe I'm talking about a dry line setup in the month of February. So this is a very abnormal pattern that we typically see in the months of spring, dew points in the 50s. So moisture is there. We also have the storms that could form along the dry line, very dry air behind this system. And take a look at this. We do have a strong shear. So that's pretty much the changing winds with wind direction and height, the cross section of the wind. So that's really what helps these storms spin and even some instability here. So the instability, although very weak, it is present and this helps those storms to grow. And take a look at this. I know a lot of you have been experiencing above average temperatures, and that's what's in place for Sunday, where some of you may even hit the 80s, especially across the Texas Panhandle. So that warmth is there, and this is gonna help fuel those storms heading into the afternoon. The wet snow is what you want for the winter, especially if you love building a snowman. This is the perfect type of snow because it has a little bit more moisture content in it. In order for this to happen, it needs to happen around 32 degrees Fahrenheit in and around that temperature. And it's perfect because it's incredibly compact. So if you wanted to make a snowman, it's easy to build on top of this. Make a little snowball here and then place it on top. And there you have it. It's a little bit more compact. It'll stay a little bit more and perfect to build a little mini snowman. And you can do this right at home. And by the end of the game, fully transitioning into snow with temperatures hovering around that freezing mark. This also means wind chill values will be at around freezing mark with temperatures between five to 10 miles per hour. Now this is an open stadium. This does not have a roof. So if you plan on attending the game, make sure you have the layers. Congratulations again on being the first woman to issue a storm prediction center watch. It's such a big win for us women in the field.